can rely on him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Um, at this time, I'd like to call upon Sister Nonsa to come to the front to do the way for offering. to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3.
thank you Lord for your supply. You shall provide Lord. As you are our provider. We trust you Lord. We trust you in you alone. No one else Lord. We thank you Father. We thank you Lord. We thank you. We thank you that we shall see your Lord your glory. Lord we thank you for this year as we, uh, as we begin this year Lord. Lord, we shall see your glory in our lives. No matter what, Lord, we look unto you. As you are the author and finisher of our faith, Lord, we look away from all destruction. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for provision. Supply each and every need, Lord, that is presented in this place. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.
thank you for the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the Son, our Lord and Savior. God, we just thank you this morning that there's no other name given among men by which they might be saved except the name of Jesus. So, Father, we exalt the name of Jesus in this place. We thank you, Lord, we're two or more gathered there. We are gathered here in your name, O oh God, and we are two or more, we acknowledge your presence. Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are our comforter, you are our strengthener. Thank you that you help us, thank you that you teach us, thank you that you lead us you guide us into all truth, for you are the spirit of truth. As you reveal truth, O oh precious Holy Spirit, we thank you. We know the truth and the truth sets us free. We thank you this morning that we are free, because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So we thank you this morning, O oh precious Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, for the holy angels who are ministering spirits given unto us the heirs of salvation. And Lord, O oh God, right now, O oh Lord, as we lift our hands to you, as we worship you, as Lord, we make our prayers and petitions known unto you. Angels are ascending and descending, ascending with prayers, O oh Lord, and descending with answers. So we thank you this morning, O oh Lord, for the ministry of angels. We thank you, O oh Lord God, for the angels of the Lord in camp about the righteous. We thank you this morning, O oh Lord, for the blood of Jesus. We thank you this morning for the precious blood of Jesus, O oh God. The blood of Jesus speaks on our behalf, O oh Lord. Because of the blood, O oh Lord, we are even new and a better covenant, O oh God. Because of the blood, O oh God, we who once were not a people have been brought by the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. We thank you this morning, O oh Lord, and when you see us this morning, you see us through the blood of Jesus. You see what the blood has done, O oh God. And we thank you this morning, O oh Lord, O oh God. We thank you for the blood. We thank you, O oh Lord God, for the new covenant which has been ratified in the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. We thank you for this new year, O oh God. You have crowned with your glory, O oh God. And it's a glorious thing that you have in store for your people, O oh God. We thank you this morning, O oh Lord. We give you thanks and we give you praise and glory. We give you honor and we give you all the worship, O oh God. I yield myself, O oh Lord, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will anoint my vocal cord to declare the word of God to God's people. Father, we just thank you this morning. And the lifting up of our hands be as the evening sacrifice, O God. Gathered in this place, O Lord, with a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving in our hearts. We praise you for who you are. We worship you for who you are. You are El El Yon, El Shaddai, the God of more than enough.
Well, praise God. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Pastor. It's good to be in church. Good morning. I say it's good to be in church. Thank God for the rain. Amen. Thank God for the rain. Rain speaks of newness and new birth. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, good morning, everybody. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is so good to be in church this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome to everybody. Amen. If you're visiting us for the first time, please, we'd just like you just to stand. We'd just like to welcome you in the house of God. This is your house, your Father's house. And we just thank God for you. Amen. Would you please stand? Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Turn from your leave, your holidays, welcome. So good to see you. Thank God for safe traveling mercies. Amen. We trust that you well and rested. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, amen. Would you go with me in your Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter number two? And as we wait there, just announcements. Uh, okay, firstly, I shared with you last week that um, our daily texting services will resume on the 17th, which will be this week. Amen? <coughs> Amen. So we thank God for what He's doing. So, we resuming with our daily text. If you haven't been receiving the daily text, purely because we had a bit of a holiday. Man, we need a holiday sometimes. Just a time of resting and just seeing what God has in store for us. Time alone with God. So the 17th of January, this week, we will begin with our daily texting services. Something we began this past week, I think it was towards the middle of the week. Um, some of you may have received it. Uh, it's a daily message that uh, we've been touched to share with all our professional people and our students. Amen. And it's got to do with life in the marketplace. I trust it's been a blessing to you. Amen. It's something new that we are starting so that we can, in addition to the word that we give you, just a word of encouragement. It's your workplace, the marketplace, the place of learning, all spheres of life. Um, we face lots of things. And, you know, and we trust that this will be an encouragement to you. And if you um, would like to receive it, we're not receiving it, please speak to Pastor Sharon, send us a text message and we will send it to you. Amen. <clears throat> then, the, the second uh, announcement is that on the 23rd of January, 23rd of January, we'll be going on 21 day fast. So it will be from the 20, 23rd of January until the 13th of February. We'll be fasting for 21 days. And I believe God has got something great in store for us. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now, I shared with you a few weeks ago that God has declared this year, the year 2022, to be the year of supernatural glory and, and grace for divine happiness. The year of supernatural glory, glory and grace for divine happenings. And I've been sharing with you over the past few weeks about the glory of God. Last week I shared with you about you being destined to manifest God's glory. Amen? That's your destiny. You've been destined to manifest God's glory. And I shared with you that the, re the meaning of the word manifest, to manifest means to show forth. 
it means to reveal. Amen? And I shared with you about the word light. From the original Greek, the word for same, it means that which makes manifest. Jesus speaking about us, speaking to us, says you are the light of the world. So in other words, you are that which makes manifest. And what are you to manifest? The glory of God. The Bible says the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge and the glory of God. And how will that be so? Through you and I. Say amen to that. Amen. amen. So you were destined to manifest God's glory. And I want to go on this morning with a sub message on that. Manifesting glory, manifesting the glory that is within you. Manifesting the glory that is within you. And I'm just thinking of Sister Nomsa's message this morning. Calling as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And I'm amazed that she shared this word about everything already being in us. And I want to go on this morning and it kind of confirms the message. And in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 10, I'm going to read three different translations. So I'm going to read first from the King James, then the Amplified, and then the Passion. And then the, Passion. the King James says this, it says, For we are, we are, we are meaning, we exist. You with me? We are. That's your present state. You exist. We are His workmanship. We are His workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Hallelujah. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You are His workmanship. Another translation says we are His masterpiece. You are His masterpiece. I want you to tell your neighbor you are His masterpiece. It doesn't matter how messed up your life may seem like this morning. It doesn't matter, matter how messed up or confused you may, uh, you may think that your life is. You are this workmanship. Jesus. You are this workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Unto good works. How many of you have ever... Um, Taking a walk or drive, and as you go, you see that there's some construction work taking place. And then you think in your mind, I wonder what's going to come up there. And very often, you find that this thing is coming up in the middle of nowhere. I remember a few years ago, when they, at the entrance of Newcastle, when we saw that development, we didn't know that it was a mall. But this thing coming up in the middle of nowhere. And people wonder, but I wonder what's coming, what's becoming of this, this place? What, what development is taking place here? Very often people are inquisitive and they want to know what is happening. And sometimes you walk past that building site and because of the rubble and the mess, sometimes it doesn't look too good. But something, you know, you look at it and you think, my God. God, can something good come from this thing? I don't know what's this. You can't see it. And sometimes you find people start talking. Because people love to talk. And then they say, Have you seen that hideous thing they're building there? Come on, talk to me somebody. And people say, Yeah, it's, it's really not appealing. But you know what? It's not appealing to the person that's looking at it as the work is in progress because they don't know the finished product. But if you speak to the architect, that's a different matter.
The architect sees the finished work already from the beginning. So the architect knows what's going to become of that thing. Now you may be walking past it and you say, oh no, this thing doesn't look nice. Or maybe it's even somebody that's busy renovating a house. You may say, oh, but you know this house is such a nice house. I don't know what on earth possessed these people. You don't know what's coming of that. But the architect does. And no matter how much people talk, the architect is still, he doesn't bother what people say. Come and talk to me, somebody. Amen. Or do you see the, the, the building contractor? He says, man, everybody in town is talking. They say this thing is looking ugly. I'm just going to stop. You don't find it. Because he's seen, he's seen the blueprints. And he works according to the blueprint. He knows where every stone should go. He knows where every pillar should be. So this is what the Bible says here. We are his workmanship. The Amplified says we are his workmanship. His own masterwork. His own masterwork. A work of art. I like that. A work of art created in Christ Jesus. Reborn from above. That is who we are. Reborn from above. You are from above and not beneath. Spiritually transformed. I like that. Spiritually transformed. Brother Jimmy, you know what's a transformer. You understand what I'm talking about. Speaking about power. There's a power that you have in your spirit now. Having been reborn from above. There's a power that's in your spirit. Spiritually transformed. Renewed. Ready to be used. You with me? You're not waiting for something to happen. You're going to make something happen. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. He says, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us. This thing has been prepared for by God himself beforehand, taking parts which he set. God has set your path. God has set your course. One of the things that God shared with us at the New Year service, if you remember, I spoke to you about reservation of blessings. You remember that? Reservation of blessings. Have you been to a place and you try to park somewhere and someone comes to tell you, sorry, you can't park there, it's reserved. Or you go to a place and you want to go sit somewhere and that place says, reserved. God has reserved things for you that are waiting for your arrival, waiting for you to come on the scene. Talk to me, somebody. I'm talking about promotions that are re reserved just for you. That's your name on it. It means it doesn't matter who else will try to apply, but because that thing has your name on it, nobody can take it from you. Talk to me, somebody. I'm talking about business contracts that have been reserved for you. Talk to me. Come on, somebody. These things that God has reserved just for you. He says, taking beforehand. This thing, it has been done beforehand. Long before you were even born. Long before you even came into existence. It was already set. Taking parts which God has set. So that we would walk in them. So that we would walk in them. Now listen to this. It's not finished. He says, living the good life. I like that. Living the good life. Which he, God, prearranged and made ready for us. That is God's plan. That we will walk in and live the good life. Come on, somebody. The passion puts it like this. He says, we have become his poetry. Come on, somebody. It's when, when people hear about poetry, they think of Shakespeare. Amen. So, we are God's poetry. 
If people want to see the love of God, they'll see it in us. We have become his poetry, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. A recreated people that will fulfill the destiny that he has given each of us. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before we were born, God planned in advance. You see that? Even before we were born, I want you to note this, I want you to embed it in your heart. Even before you were born, God planned in advance our destiny. Your destiny has been planned in advance. Wow. Praise God. Okay, let me, let me try and put it in simple terms. You know, God doesn't want you living from paycheck to paycheck. Because you do not have a salary gyro. You have Jehovah gyro. He's, come on, he's the God of more than enough. Talk to me, somebody. Now, I want you to think about this. Because many people with that type of mentality, you find that the last day of the month, that person is the happiest person in life. They're the happiest, they're the most joyful person. Sometimes it's even a pleasure to be around that person, just for that day. And then from the second, third, fourth, fifth, once those debits start going through, you see that level of happiness diminishing. You with me? But think about this. It's kind of exactly what Bronson was saying. That what, you, what, you, what, you are, what you need in life, God has already given it to you. It's already within you. So think of it this way. That God... You're happy on the day you get your salary. Now just think about having an advance on your salary. If that same person that's happy for three days of the month, if they got an advance on their salary, you'd be amazed how much longer that person would be joyful. You'd be amazed. But now he says here, God planned in advance our destiny and good works. We would do to fulfill it. He, he's already planned it in advance. Your life has been planned in advance. It's a good life. It doesn't matter what's happening. It doesn't matter. You know, sometimes in the natural, yes, it may seem like you do not have. But it's only a matter of time because you serve a God of more than enough. A God who supplies all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter where the sickness comes your way. You know what I've, what I've come to realize, what we've come to realize in these days, especially with the pandemic that's been going on is people are so focused on sickness that their spirit they have become sick. But you should, listen, that should never stop you because He is the Lord, your healer. Come on somebody. He says, I am the Lord that healed thee. Why does He say, I'm the Lord that healed you? Because He knows that sickness will come. He's your healer. He says, I'm the Lord who provides for you. He knows that a day will come when you need him to provide for you. He is your life. He is your everything. Talk to me, somebody. Now, you may look at your life right now, and you may think that your life is all messed up. Let me tell you, it's not the end of the story. It's not the end of the story. Last week, I shared with you, do not let the opinion of men dictate to you. The opinion of men, that is not, oh Jesus, hallelujah. The people are not your author. The Lord God is the author of your life. Amen. That means his opinion matters most. Talk to me somebody. Hallelujah. Your life may seem messed up. 
just like the person that walks past that building that's been built and they look and they see. But because their eye is untrained, they cannot see the end result, but the architect does. So you may look at your life and you may think, but you know, I don't know, but listen, if you spend time with the Word of God, you get a clearer picture of where your life is headed. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now God is the master builder and architect of our lives. He is the master builder and the architect. And He has designed the blueprint of our life. He knows exactly line for line what's going to happen. Have you ever seen a plan, a building plan? They are, you know, every line is in its place. It's in accordance with specific specifications. There are angles and there's a whole lot of things that they use. Formulas, mathematics, all those things. And they put together to bring together this plan. And it is God who knows every blueprint of your life. He knows every, listen, He knows every step that you're going to take. He knows it. Amen. And though outwardly sometimes, you know, your life may seem messed up and, you know, people may even sometimes even write you off. God still knows that within us is a masterpiece. It's a, there's, there's a masterpiece within us that has the potential to reveal his glory. There's a masterpiece within you. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we look to God and His Word for what God and His Word says concerning us. I want to tell you this year 2022 Jehovah alone has the final say in your life I don't care what the doctor said I don't care what medical science says I don't care what the politicians say I don't care what the media say I'm here to tell you this morning that in the year 2022 and beyond for all the days of your life Jehovah God has the final say say amen to that what God says about you, no man can contradict. If God said it, he will do it. Four things I want you to remember. Is number one, God created you in his image and likeness. You have the DNA of your heavenly father. You understand you are created in his image and likeness. If you look at any child that is born into a family, and you look at that child, you say, man, he's got his father's look. Ah, he's got his mother's nose. Ah, he's got... Are you with me? Now you are born of God. The epistle of John speaks and says, as he is, so are we in this world. Talk to me, somebody. You've been created in his image and in his likeness. You have the DNA of your heavenly father. Hallelujah. You've been designed, number two, you've been designed to function as he does. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. Hallelujah. You have faith as a mustard seed. You can speak to the mountain, tell it to be moved and it is so. If there's any that are sick, you lay hands upon the sick and they recover. Glory to God. Talk to me, somebody. If there's demons or devils coming up your alley, all you need to do, come on, talk to me. In his name, you cast out demons and devils. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. You're not a person that's walking in fear. You're a person walking in faith, living and operating in faith. Talk to me. The third point I want to make is that we are to operate as sons of God on the earth, ruling and dominating by the power of God. Hallelujah. You operate as a son of God. In the book of Romans, the Bible says, the creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That manifestation speaks of the revealing of the sons of God. And you are a son of the Most High God. Where you are, wherever you show up, the glory shows what come on, talk to me. The glory of God shows up with you. You may be in a workplace where nothing seems to be working, but because you have 
because you are there. Things change. The glory of God revealed. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Point number four is that we are created to manifest the glory of God to our generation. You see, God ordained, He preordained at a specific, a specific time, a time such as now. This is your now moment. This is your now moment. Quit thinking and quit thinking back and saying, oh my, you know, back then, you know, it was better then. Let me tell you, there's better days now. Because the Bible says your latter will be greater. Come and talk to me, somebody. How many of you have, um, how many of you know the artist Michelangelo? Michelangelo. You ever heard of Michelangelo? Amen. Now, it's amazing as you look at the life of Michelangelo that in the 1500s, um, he was commissioned, he was one of those that were commissioned to sculpture something that would go on the roof of the cathedral. Michelangelo was only 26 years old when they came to him. A 26 year old. And they gave him marble. You all know what's marble, right? They gave him marble. But it wasn't of a good quality marble. It was marble that was rejected. Marble that, you know, other artists who also had that opportunity to work with the same marble, they refused it, they rejected it because it was, a, it was of an, an inferior quality. It was an inferior type of marble. It wasn't pure. And those, there were some of those who tried to work with it. And as they worked with it, some noticed it is too hard to work with. Others noted that it was a waste of time. So they left it. But here's Michelangelo, 26 years old. And he goes and he begins work on this marble. And he works on it. And what he sculptures, he sculptures the, the sculpture of David. From the biblical story of David and Goliath, he sculptures a sculpture of David. And it takes him about three to three and a half years to complete it. That when it was completed, everybody was amazed with this sculpture. Then they found out that this sculpture could not be used for the cathedral, for its desired place. So they put it somewhere where it could be shown to everybody. Because it was so big. It's a big word. And because it was so appealing, they changed its location. They took it and they placed it in the Galleria, where it is up to this day. And for over 500 years, people have celebrated that sculpture. A sculpture that came from nothing. A sculpture that came from something people despised. Nobody wanted to work with it because they thought it's pointless. It is useless. It is of no use. That if you, if you study art, you speak to artists as they study art, that sculpture of David is one that people, that artists are still studying today. They're still learning about it today. That marvelous work that came from something that people despised. Now even so, brothers and sisters, that is what God does in our lives. God loves to turn the stones that the builders rejected and turn it to a chief cornerstone. And he puts it on public display for all to see his glory. Come and talk to me, somebody. He takes the things that are despised of men. He takes the things that are rejected and he works with those things. So maybe you may, you, may, you may be of the opinion that yes, in life you faced rejection. Your parents could have rejected you. Your siblings could have rejected you. Talk to me somebody. Family could have rejected you. Friends could have rejected you. Society could have rejected you. 
You could have been rejected in your workplace. But God says you are his work in progress. You are under construction. You know when you go to a construction site, one thing that you will notice is they put some danger tape around there. Because nobody is allowed to enter because there's construction taking place. And I'm here to tell you, I see danger tape all around you. That if the enemy even were to try and come and touch you, God says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm because there's a work in progress. I'm not just finished now. Come on, talk to me somebody. Hallelujah. There's danger tape around you. If you go and cross that danger tape, guess what happens? You, most likely you'll be arrested. Most likely you're going to pay a penalty for that. I hope you're getting what I'm saying here, somebody. Hallelujah. Oftentimes, you know, society may look at us and look at you. And they conclude that, hey, the end of your story is but a poor one. But when God looks at us, and God looks at your story this morning, I'm here to tell you that when God sees you, God sees a masterpiece emerging from what he's busy working on. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. He sees a masterpiece emerging. You might, you might say, yeah, but pastor, you know the things that have been said about me, the things that I've heard. Yes, I don't care how much dirt you've been covered with. Come on, talk to me. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Don't allow yourself to be buried with people's offenders. You are risen with the risen Christ. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. And people are telling you, oh, this whole country is going down. There's no future for us. There's no future for our children. I'm here to tell you, there is a future. There is a living hope. In Jesus, yes, there is. Someone tells you next time, they say, oh, this country is going to the dogs. You tell them, speak, to, speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. You're going to the dogs. I'm not going to the dogs. Come on, he said, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the top dog. I'll be on top and the top only. Come on, talk to me, somebody. We just heard Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. You are his workmanship. In other words, you are God's divine project. You are God's divine project. You know, when you look at, you go to these corporate organizations, you always find they've got someone that they call a project manager or a project leader. And every time... They want to try and enhance or improve the operations. They will entrust all those projects to this person. And this person is responsible for carrying out and managing those projects. He's the project leader, the project manager. If anyone wants to know what's happening with the project, they will speak to the project manager. But I'm here to tell you this morning that you are God's divine project. God is working with you. If anybody wants to know what's happening with your life, you tell them, speak to my project manager. Speak to my project leader. I don't care what my eyes see, but I know what my spirit sees. That's why it's so important for you to spend time with the word of God and spend time in prayer so that you can see what God is doing. Talk to me, somebody. You are God's divine project. As a child of God, you are not created to be average. I want you to get that in your heart, get it in your mind. God has not created you to be average. You were created to stand out like a sore thumb. Come on. Jesus said you're the light of the world. You don't take light and put it under the table or under the bed. You take it and you put it on the table where everybody can see. That means you are the one, you're the problem solver. You are there to show the way. Talk to me, somebody. You are not average. You see, when people, you know, you may be in school and people say, but you know, mathematics is so difficult. Or, you know, but, uh, physics is so difficult. It is not difficult to the child of God. You need to tell yourself this. 
It may be, to, you, you know, it may be average to every average person, but I'm not created to be average. Tell yourself, I'm going to master this thing. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. You are not called to live an ordinary life. There is a treasure that is hidden on the inside of you. Your life is not ordinary. You've been called to live an extraordinary life. That when people look at your life, they begin to wonder and they begin to ask the questions about you. And you tell them about this Jesus who died at Calvary for you. This Jesus who has taken you from the bottomless pit. Come and talk to me and cause you to sit amongst the princes of his people. Every 
anything you're trusting God for for this year. There could be six, you could come with 60 or 70 requests. It doesn't matter. And then you go and look for scriptures that line up with those things. And you pray about it and you confess the scriptures. And you pray the scriptures. You'll be amazed. The thing you trust in God for is number one. God is going to start with number 30. And then he'll go to number 50. And then he'll go to number 20. Then he'll go down to number 70. You may find number one. You probably only get it next year. Because your priorities, your thoughts, are not his thoughts. Your ways are not his ways. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts. His ways are higher than your ways. Where there's no way, he'll make a higher way. Come on, somebody. Have you ever driven, you know, when you're traveling somewhere? I don't know, when you're traveling on the N11. You get irritated because it's a hundred. And you just can't wait. And then you go through Nambiti. And it's just a hundred. And you can't wait. And every time you see there's a gap or there's a double line, man, you, you give us some boom and you just hope and pray there's no one in the khaki uniform in the front there. But when you hit the M3 or you hit the M1, boy, oh boy, hallelujah, there's no stopping you now because now you can slip, come on, you can move through lanes. You move through lanes. It may look like you're on the N11 right now, but I'm here to tell you, you're close to the N3. You're close to the N1. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's an anointing of ease that's coming upon you. It's going to happen easily. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit and my Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. may not look like it now when you look at everything in your life it doesn't look like it's all in order it, it will look like that but it's purely because your life is still under construction and God has been that has begun a good work in you will bring it to perfection. God will bring it to perfection. The psalmist says, Thou will perfect all that which concerns me. Thou will perfect all that which concerns me. God will perfect all that that concerns you. He'll perfect your marriage. He'll perfect your children. He'll perfect your family. He'll perfect your home. He'll perfect your workplace. You see, that's the problem. I mean, why? Listen, 2022, it's a different year. Some of you in 2021, you went to work. And it was a nice day. You brought work's package back home. And now you're stressed out about work. Don't be stressed out. God will perfect it. God will perfect it. They may say it doesn't look like it's good. You say, man, God is in charge. God is working here. Are you with me, somebody? God will perfect it. God is bringing that work to perfection. Two things that are necessary. And the necessary, two things that are a necessary process. For us to see the treasure that is hidden within us is prayer and devoted study of the Word of God. Two things that are necessary. Prayer and devoted study of the Word of God. If you're not studying the Word of God, you will not have faith to bring those dreams and those potentials to pass. 
That's why you've got to study the Word of God. Because this is your mirror. If you want to see who you truly are, what you're capable of, it's in this Word. The Bible says we are all transformed into the same image. It means whatever you're looking at, you're being transformed into whatever you're looking at. If you're looking at the, the scientist journal, you're being transformed to that. Your thinking is going to be that. But if you're looking to the Word of God, we are transformed into the same image from glory to glory, a glory which never fades. I'm here to tell you your story is not over. The glory is coming. Come on and talk to me. Hallelujah. Isaiah 60. Arise and shine for thy light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. So to manifest God's glory, we must be willing to pay the price of prayer and devoted study to the word of God. If we look at Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 29, speaking of the transfiguration of Jesus, the Bible says, And as Jesus prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. Oh boy, I like that. As Jesus prayed, his countenance was altered. I'm here to tell you this morning, as you pray, your countenance will change. Hallelujah. You with me, somebody? If there's anything happening in your life, you take it to your prayer closet. You'll find that it's going to change. He says, as Jesus prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistening. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory. Oh boy. And spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. They paid the price of prayer. While the world, listen, the world is in sleep. There are many even believers who are fast asleep. There's a remnant that are spending time in prayer. As you spend time in prayer, things are changing. Your life is changing. Your life is changing. Your world is changing. You could be diagnosed with a terminal sickness. But as you pray, there's something happening in your body. Something happening in your body. You find that those who are sleeping, when they wake up, all they see is the glory. But they don't realize the sacrifice you paid. When Jesus prayed on the Mount of Transfiguration, there was a transformation and His glory was revealed. His glory was manifest. Hallelujah. Spend time in prayer. Spend time on the prayer mountain. Talk to me, somebody. Can we do that this year, 2022? Every time you're going to pray, say, I'm going to pray a mountain. Hallelujah. Look at Moses. Moses spoke to God on the mountain. Jesus prayed on the mountain. We should be on the mountain. Listen. If you are in battle, you ask any soldier, ask them, they'll tell you. It's easier for you to win the battle when you're on top of the mountain than at the bottom. Because when you're on top, you can just roll down the stones. And whoever's trying to come up, they ain't going to come up because you're on the top of that mountain. But if you're at the bottom, then you're on the same level. That's how you got to go up to pray a mountain. Are you with me, Jesus? Christ in us is the hope of glory. That's the Bible. Christ, this is the mystery. Christ in us, the hope 
of glory. And it is in the place of prayer and fasting, when the flesh dies, that we allow Christ to freely manifest himself to us. That's why we've got to fast and we've got to pray. Amen? Hallelujah. Three things in closing. Number one, I want you to, real, to realize that there is a treasure deep within you. You are not untalented. Everybody has a talent. Everybody has potential. Everybody has a dream. I see your dreams coming to pass. Your dreams will come to manifestation. I'm telling you, your dreams will come to manifestation. Become like Joseph. Allow God to breathe life onto your dreams. Your dreams are coming to manifestation. You will realize your dreams in this year, 2022. Point number two, you may be rejected as a stone today, but watch out. Watch out. God is causing you to become the chief cornerstone. You may have been rejected, but God will cause you to be recognized. Don't be surprised when things come your way Called to do things you've never done in your life. Don't be surprised and don't say, I don't think I can do it. No, no, no. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You may say, but if I don't know, Pastor, you don't know, I don't know. Nobody showed me. Let him who lacks wisdom ask of God, who gives to all liberally. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just hear the Lord asking, ask them, when last did they ask me for wisdom? When last did they ask me for direction? It is in the play of, in the place of prayer and fasting. When our flesh dies, I share with you that Christ manifests his glory for you. So it's so important for you. Spend time. Spend time in the Lord. Let's watch the space. You may look at your life and it looks like a whole world. And you see nothing. You just see nothing. But right now, right now, you put something there. Watch the space. Watch the space. By faith, you just say, watch this. That may sound foolish in your workplace. It could be in that position. I don't care how long, whatever. But maybe you need to do this when you get to work this week. Write your name, surname, put your position there. Or maybe you will go home today. Your salary advice has got your job title, your occupation. Maybe just go put in brackets next to whatever your occupation is. Put in brackets there, watch the space. God is busy, watch the space. Watch the space. And you'll get to work, they'll tell you all things are bad. You'll just say, watch the space. Promotion comes not from the north, the south, the east, or the west. The Bible says promotion comes from the Lord. Watch the space. Somebody's about to get elevated by grace. Somebody is a come and talk to me, somebody. Somebody's about to change location. Did you know? Did you know that everything that happens in your life?
life it's by the grace of God and let me tell you once grace locates you grace can change your location come on there was a woman named Ruth she was like nothing nobody come on talk to me she was a Moabite but once grace located her there was a woman by the name of Esther she was a nobody but once grace located her I'm here to tell you that grace is about to locate you Just, I want to, I want to just say this. Just as they cast away Joseph and he turned around to become the preserver of his generation, God will turn things around and cause those that rejected you to one day celebrate you. Instead of being rejected, you'll be celebrated. You keep your eyes on God. Keep your eyes on the word. Keep your eyes on Jesus. The day of celebration is near. All you need to do is to be rightly positioned in Christ. Your positioning is very important. Be rightly positioned in Christ. And every other thing will fall into Get your positioning right. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Here to tell you that I see it happening now as you focus, you keep your eyes focused on Jesus, and you keep your positioning right. God is going to give you sweatless victories. Sweatless victories. Victories you didn't sweat for. Victories that he did. Handing it to you on a silver platter. And if God be for you, nobody can be against you. You are immovable. You are unshakable. You are unstoppable. Immovable. Unshakable. Unstoppable. Nothing and nobody can stop you except you and you alone. You got that? Nobody can stop you. Nothing can stop you. The only one that can limit your growth, limit your development, is you and you alone. So don't blame anybody else. Don't blame your neighbor. Don't blame, don't stop playing the blaming game. It's enough with that man. That man that was there at the pool. When the waters were stirred, Jesus came. Do you want to be made whole? He says, Oh Master, every time I want to jump in, somebody gets in before me. It's enough with the blaming. It's enough with the excuses. It's you and you alone. Jesus asked him, do you want to be there? He didn't ask him about who's jumping in and who's not jumping in and who left him. He says, do you want to be made well? If your answer is yes, he tells you, lay those blaming and excuses, put it to rest, bury it today. Take up your bed. Take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. I see strength coming to you. I see the hand of the Lord upon you. I see the favor of the Lord encompassing you as a shield. I see the glory of the Lord upon you, upon your home, upon your family, upon your workplace. See the hand of God working in your life. I see it. It's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. Hallelujah. Come on, let us stand. Those trees are 
dreams are coming to pass. Those desires are coming to pass. Jesus. Trust God for more this year. Trust God for more. Trust God that He'll do that with all your other subjects. Trust Him for more. He trusted God that He'll get a hundred percent. Paper, his teacher wrote me a message and said, Mr. Finn, I want to congratulate you. Your son is amazing. He achieved a hundred percent in his mathematics. He scored a hundred in his maths final paper and 98 for his for the year. But Joshua God says, trust God. Trust me. Let every subject, every subject, every subject, trust God for bigger position on the mission. Trust Him for bigger position. Is it Santana? It's Santana, right? Trust God for greater. Be careful who you listen to because not everybody is for your success or for your growth. Believe God for greater. There's a bigger thing that God has in store for you. Trust God. The dream that you have, trust God. It's going to come to pass. Trust God. Forget about everything else. Forget about it all. Trust God. Trust God. You'll be amazed what God is going to There's things that are going to gravitate towards you. You know, Alicia, you're getting what I'm saying. Trust God. Jesus was born in a manger garden. He didn't go looking for gold or silver. The gold came to him. So you will not be looking around for positions with better money. Those things will gravitate towards you. Attracts a magnet. A magnet attracts. Are you getting what I'm saying? The thing is, how big is your magnet? If I'm going to take the magnet from this speaker and I'm going to go and try and pick up one of the cars outside, nothing's going to happen. That magnet's just going to stick on it and nothing's going to happen. But if I have a magnet big enough that I need a crane, I'm going to pick up some stuff. within you 
potential. The potential that you have within you will cause the things you need to bring to pass that destiny to gravitate towards you. Are you with me, Kimura? Get ready. Get ready. When it, when it comes, it's going to come so quickly. It's going to come so quickly. You'll be overwhelmed. You won't know what to do. Get ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I don't know. But things are about to change. That's, I see doors, it looks like doors were shut. of the swinging door. You know there's a difference with a swinging door and a normal. You know, you get a door, you gotta, you gotta use pressure. A swinging door, you arrive and you just, you just touch. But I see you entering a season where it's gonna be much easier for you. It's not gonna be as difficult as it was before. Forget the things of old. God is doing a new thing. It's a new thing. It's time you saw. You saw things in a new light. But things are changing for you. It looks like it's been changing, but the change was kind of, it was, it was taking time. But you're going to get to a place where it's just going to happen drastically. Hallelujah. Yes. I think 
than about three people here who are going to travel. One will be for work. It will be kind of be permanent work. But you're going to travel, you're going to travel. Alicia, get your passport. You got your passport? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thanks. Come, praise and worship, team. 